Native People of Wisconsin, Chapter 8, Boarding School Experiences. Menominee. Some Menominee children were sent to government boarding schools in Wisconsin, mainly in Lac du de Flambeau, Toma, and Hayward. Some were sent as far away as South Dakota and Pennsylvania. Other children remained on the reservation and attended St. Joseph's Catholic School or the government boarding school in Kishina. In some schools, Menominee children were not allowed to speak their native language or take part in Menominee customs. Ho-Chunk. Norwegian Lutherans started a mission and boarding school near Wittenberg in Shano County. The United States government also opened boarding schools to teach non-Indian ways of life to Ho-Chunk children. One of these was the Toma Indian Industrial School. Here, teachers discourage Ho-Chunk children from speaking their native language and from expressing their native culture, such as wearing traditional clothing. Often children as young as six years old were taken from their homes, placed in the Toma school, and not allowed to return home until they had graduated from high school. Ojibwe. As the U U.S. did with the Menominee and Ho-Chunk people, they took Ojibwe children from their homes and placed them in government boarding schools. School officials discouraged the children from speaking their language or practicing their religions and customs. Throughout much of the late 1800s and early 1900s, Ojibwe parents had no say in decisions about the schools their children attended. Most Ojibwe children went from one of these government-run schools in Hayward, Toma, or Lochte de Flambeau. Some went to Christian mission schools such as St. Mary's School or the Bad River Reservation. Other children were sent as far away as Pennsylvania. Potawatomi. Like other native peoples in Wisconsin, Potawatomi children were often sent to boarding schools where officials forbid them from speaking their language. Often the children could not practice their customs and religions. The Potawatomi responded to these pressures in different ways. Many accepted Christianity. Other mixed Christian beliefs was their own beliefs. Some Potawatomi escaped to northern forests, creating settlements where they could secretly practice their own religion, customs, and traditions. Oneida. The education experience for Oneida children was a mixed one. Most Oneida children went to either the Christian boarding school or the government boarding school on the reservation. Other children went away to schools in Pennsylvania or Virginia. Both the church schools and the government schools only allowed students to speak English. Schools also discouraged any expression of the Oneida language and culture. Many parents wished to protect their children from the harsh treatment they had been through, so they encouraged their children to adopt non-Indian ways. As one tribal member sadly explained, they, my parents, were shamed into not teaching history. Another said, my mother and father both spoke Oneida, but not so much in front of us kids. As a review, result, fewer people spoke Oneida and they could only practice Oneida traditions secretly. Giving up their traditional ways also led to a scattering of the Oneida people. Mohican Nation Stockbridge Muncie Band. The U.S. government forced Mohicans, like other Indian nations, to send their children to boarding schools. There, the educators refused to let students use their traditional language or practice their traditional culture expression. They tried to erase us, explained Dorothy Davids, who attended the Lutheran Mission School in Red Springs. They tried to make us into something else. David described herself as one of the luckier children. Every Friday afternoon, her grandfather came to the mission to pick her up and take her home for the weekend. Other children stayed at the mission for the entire school year, returning home only in the summers, if at all. Some Mohican children attended Indian boarding schools in Wisconsin communities like Gresham and Toma, but a few were sent as far away as South Dakota and Pennsylvania. The experience of Mohican children at the mission school were mixed. Bernice Miller Pigeon recalled her years as happy ones. Like David's, Pigeon was able to return to her family each weekend. David's described the school as not bad, but a place where punishment could be harsh. Still, she said, they did teach us to read and write. Boarding school questions. How would you feel if people who had a different culture and different customs forced you to live the way they lived? What if you were punished every time you spoke your native language? 
Can you imagine saying goodbye to your family when you're only six years old and not returning home for many years? How do you think you would feel? How would you feel when you finally returned home?